Yo, what's up? It's the MMA analyst here to do my recap for Tough Den. Um, wow, some very surprising things. Well, maybe, yeah, two very surprising things. Number one, I can't believe Houston Alexander came out like that and just, uh, yeah, forget about going in order and stuff. Let's just talk about, you know, what's really going down. Houston Alexander came out there and just wanted to circle and was like, he was the least aggressive he had ever been. I'm like, damn, he really, he really circling around Kimball like that. Wow. And this fight went to a decision. I couldn't believe it. If, ev if ever there was something that Houston Alexander didn't want to do, it was coming to the UFC and lose his fourth UFC match in a row. But that would have been better than coming to the UFC, running for a round, getting completely dominated on the ground, like I said he would if it went to the ground, and then getting tired, all jacked up, and then still losing his fourth. Oh, my God. It would have been better if he would have went out there and just, you know, act like a damn fool. Just, and I don't know, that's not how you're supposed to throw punches, but that's how they... It would have been better if he would have done that and got knocked out in 20 seconds than honestly losing via, uh, via decision after literally running like Caleb Starnzing for a whole round. I'm going to switch something up here, guys. Hold on one sec. Crazy. Here we go. Let's switch it up. One sec. Erks. Erks. All right. Computer is terrible. It's going to overheat and stuff, so I got to switch it up. Anyways, so, um, dude actually came out. Kimbo looked all right on his feet. He was, you know, he stuck to a game plan. He, he didn't chase after um, Houston Alexander. And uh, he got a win. You know what I mean? I, you know, very good job for uh, for Kimbo's lights. I know Dana was on the sidelines like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's got a win in the UFC. You know, we can maybe. He had a nasty slam. He had some good stuff. He had a nice big ass slam. He actually, like, stuffed the takedown and ended up on top. Kind of looked like when Cyborg tried to take down Gina and Gina landed a mount. Looked kind of like that. Anyways, Dana was like, oh, this is great. Kimbo won in the UFC. Woo-hoo. He's happy. Now I don't know what he's going to do. Joe Silva, I mean, this is big. This is a big decision. You know, do you just throw him into the lion's den? Um, or do you try and do a similar type of matchup where you grab somebody that uh, could play into Kimbo's game and maybe get him another win before you throw him into the lion's den? Because really, one of the questions I'll ask is what – Light heavyweight or heavyweight could Kimbo fight? Now remember, you wouldn't be any guy with wrestling skill, takedown skills, jujitsu skills. So it can't be that, and it can't be anybody that has any of those things and really good striking. Or it can't even be a guy that has just jujitsu skills and not much striking. It's very difficult to match him up because they want him to win so that they can really, really, you know, milk that Kimbo train. I hope, and trust me. If anybody's been watching these videos, you know I have nothing against Kimbo. I like Kimbo. I have nothing but respect for a dude who went out there, you know, you know, started training. He went from getting easy money, you know, and by easy, I just mean, you know, doing what's natural, fighting on the street, and then, you know, being that guy in Elite XC, getting paid big money, shouldn't be headlining shows, to a lot tougher money, going to the UFC, going through the house, having to go through losses, having to go through... You know, so I got respect for Kimbo in, in training and in, in interviews. And in, from whatever I hear, I always hear the guy's respectful. The guy wants to learn. All he wants to do is, you know, he got that bad knee and arthritis. And he, they say he's 35, but I still don't believe he, it. Still think he's older than that. But anyways, um, as for Houston Alexander, that's four losses in a row in the UFC. He has uh, maybe two wins in between, or maybe one win in between his. Four losses, but that was the worst thing Houston Alexander could have done. Now, let's go to the other thing that surprised me. UFC, uh, or the Athletic Commission, actually stuck by um, rules and did what would be a very 
um, unpopular decision, which was giving John Jones the uh, the disqualification. When John Jones was smashing on Matt Hamill like I thought he would, when John Jones was doing his thing, absolutely destroying Matt Hamill, Matt Hamill did not have a shot in there, and in the middle of all this ass whooping, he throws a couple illegal, about four or five illegal downward elbows. Now, at first I thought, it doesn't matter what happened, if he would have done anything, nobody in the situation that Matt Hamill was in was going to get up and say, oh, let's fight. Take off a point. Anybody would have been like, let me just get out of this cage. Maybe I can get out with a win. But Matt Hamill was hurt. If he wasn't hurt, he's the best actor out there. His eyes were half open and just, I'm telling you, like, he was hurt. He had blood. At, he was hurt. That dude was hurt. It kind of looked like when people, like, in the movies, they fall off, uh, uh, like, you know, 10-story building onto the top of a car. They bust out all the windows and they zoom in on the guy's face and blood's come out of everywhere. It might not have been as bad as that, but it was damn near as bad as that. So, uh, I got nothing to say against, you know, that. Like, Matt Hamill was hurt. And I said, if they go by the rules, John Jones just got disqualified. If they go by the rules. And I'm surprised that John Jones wasn't aware of this or that his corner or somebody wasn't saying, John, don't be so happy yet. You might get a loss because of this. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of situations in the past where illegal blows have ended fights. And not ones where it was questionable, where you couldn't tell. There was an eye poke with one guy and, you know, and Anthony Rumble Johnson ends up, you know, he gets a loss and they give the other guy. No, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, like, Andre Arlovsky and I forget who he was fighting. But basically he was doing some illegal blows to the back of the head. And the referee, stop hitting the back of the head. Stop hitting the back of the head. The guy goes, oh, cold. Winner, Andre Arlovsky. I'm like, wow. So I figured they might do something like that. But nah, man, they stuck to it. They said, you know, illegal blow, ended the fight. And I, I respect their their ability to, uh, let me lo lower this down. I respect their ability to, you know, keep the rules going. John Jones, no big deal. Dude's 22 years old. Everybody knows that he won that fight. Um, he just, you know, wasn't aware of the rules or kind of slipped his mind or whatever it is. This is, by no means, is this a roadblock in his career. He'll, he'll, he'll do just fine. Matt Hamill, on the other hand, he'll be fine all right, too, but he got the F beat out of him. Wow. All right. Roy Nelson versus Brendan Schaub. Time to talk about that. Roy Nelson did his thing. Um, damn, you know, he almost had him in that crucifix again. I said, oh, Lord, he's not going to do it again. Get that takedown. You know, half, half, half guard, side mount. Crucifix, end it. Oh no, he's not gonna do that again. He didn't. He ended up doing what would be a better thing for him, which was just to put him out. But you see how that, that like, that whatever was happening in the house situation. Because you gotta realize, there's no reason for people to really dislike, um, Roy Nelson. I mean, he says a lot of little, but the stuff he says is kind of like half the time. He's, like, dogging himself for just, you know, being unskilled and fat. And they just plan. And the other times, he's talking about, you know, let me just get a cheeseburger. And the other times, he's talking about, you know, how was that? That was a great fight. But in reality, if, especially in this TV show, if, if all you saw was Roy Nelson on Tough, he really didn't do anything to get people to hate him. He didn't do anything in the house. He wasn't doing all types of dumb stuff. He wasn't starting fights. wasn't really picking on people. He was just literally being himself, doing his thing. No reason to be upset, but, you know, somebody in the UFC was like, that guy gets on my nerves. And all of a sudden, everybody hates Roy Nelson. They're all, oh, man, I can't stand him, da 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 So, anyways, Roy Nelson did his thing. Um, Brendan Schaub, I mean, he, he, he got on his back. He, he, he regained, uh, he, he, he maintained composure. He, he, he got back to his feet, and he probably thought he was out of the hot water. And, you know, in this situation, he jumped out of the lion's den, right in the lion's mouth. Ronks. Knocked out. Shoop that shab. All right. Um, what else we got? Frank Edgar versus Matt Veach. I was very impressed with Matt Veach, even in loss. Um, more or less with his strength and size and ability to do what he was doing to Frank Edgar. Um, his striking is not that good at all by any means. He leaps in, wild punches. Um, but, you know... It was kind of like, that's what his striking is. He wants to fight to the ground, so 
you know, it's all good. Um, Frank Edgar, on the other hand, kept it nice and composed, had some nice stuff takedowns. Um, I mean, he got slammed a bunch of times, but when he really needed to get out, like, you know, you get slammed once, you get slammed twice, you get slammed three times. You got, you're like, I can't get slammed any damn more. I need to keep this on my feet because eventually you're just going to get tired of getting slammed and lose that damn fight. So he said, enough is enough. I got to do everything I can to not get slammed. Got the TKO. Um, Marcus Jones versus Matt Mitrone. Marcus Jones, man, like, I'm all, I'm a fan of the dude in general. Of just, like, a guy who trying is trying to better himself, who's trying to improve. And, I mean, for a big-ass, you know, Frankenstein zombie-looking dude, I mean, he's got some half-decent, more than half-decent jiu-jitsu off his back. Very surprised with the submissions in the house. And, um, you know... He's got some half-decent control on the ground. But his stand-up is horrible. And to be completely honest, I mean, I don't really want to see, and I'm sure his wife doesn't, and his family doesn't want to see him going out there and just completely getting knocked out over and over again. That's what will happen if he can't get the fight to the ground. I thought he'd be able to get the fight to the ground. Um, He did, but it took him to the end of the round. And, uh, I mean, his stand-up is so bad and so flawed. That anybody that can throw a punch will knock him out. I picked him to win the fight because I thought he could get it to the ground and win it on the ground because uh, Mitrione's ground game is none too special at all. But, um, I mean, it's worse than I thought. It's worse than I thought. So, I mean, really, um, I'm, I'm pulling for the Marcus Jones early retirement just because I don't want to see him go out and get knocked out every single time he fights. If he goes to the UFC and fights these real dudes... You know what I mean? He's gonna get knocked out too. He's getting knocked out by the un by, by like the, you know, he got knocked out by Owen O. Matt Mitrione. He got knocked out. Um, who is who else knocked him out? Was that Shab that knocked him out? Yeah, Shab knocked him out. He'll get knocked out over and over again. That's gotta get old for somebody, especially when you're coming to the game so late. So I mean, I'm all I'm all good for Marcus Jones. He seemed like a good dude and everything, but I mean, a lot of these guys should probably quit. But I'm just saying. In particular, the reason why he should is because it's just not necessary to get knocked out over and over like that. Um, Daryl Schoonover versus James McSweeney. Um, I mean, it was a it was a mm, good win, James McSweeney. Uh, good luck, Daryl Schoonover, going back to fight fighting in the armies, going overseas again. Damn, I mean that's a that's a job right there. You telling me something's gonna shoot at you? You got to worry about all types of stuff every day? Whew. I mean, I can't hate on that. I mean, someone's got to do it. It is not me. Whoa. Uh, Justin Ren versus John Madsen. I don't think they showed that, but uh, Madsen, uh, he got the win. Congratulations, John Madsen. Brian Stan, I believe. Uh, yeah, Brian Stan got the win. Congratulations, Brian Stan. Dennis. Hallman versus John Howard. For those who didn't see it and those who don't know, I didn't see it either, but I read it. But basically, this dude, John Howard, was basically controlled and on his way to a loss. Basically, it kind of looked, according to what I was reading, kind of like that uh, Brendan Schaub versus uh, the dude that was just holding him down nonstop. And then he got that knockout in the second round. But, like, this one went all the way to, like, third round... 20 seconds left, and you just got completely controlled, no damage, but just held down and boredomed to death. And with, like, seconds left, you knocked this dude out five seconds left. So, I mean, it would have been nice if they could have shown, like, that and fast forward, slow down at the end. And then you got Mark Bocek submitting Joe Brammer. And for those who aren't aware, you know, people say, you know, I, I went to the website and I looked at the stuff and, and the stuff doesn't look racist to me. It's not that their stuff is racist. For example, like I understand that, you know, an iron cross in itself is not racist. And I understand that a bald or the eagle, you know, is not racist by itself. And I understand there's nothing racist against, there's nothing racist about the word Reich. And there's nothing racist about, you know, um, let's say, you know, what is it? Like strength and power as your motto or whatever. But like... When everything is combined together and you have 
you know, you know, on your MySpace page, a neo-Nazi band song playing up until a few days ago when they took it down, and you have um, a neo-Nazi band um, as your favorite band on your blog site, which was also taken down a few days ago. And when you have neo-Nazi bands saying, we are sponsored by these dudes, you know what I mean? You know, I don't want to say it like, looks like a duck and all that, quack like a duck, and it's a duck stuff, but damn, that's what it is. You know what I mean? If I say to you, you know, I'm not this way, you know, but I, but I do all these different actions, and, you know, any one individual action might not be all that crazy. But you combine them all together and it is what it is. But I'm going to leave that alone. Never talk about it again. Um, Bocek looked good. He completely controlled the fight. Um, systematic. Um, took him down. Just tore him apart. Jiu-Jitsu. Beautiful. Overall, man, this, this fight, I mean, it, it felt like it went on forever, to be honest. Um, maybe it's because I'm dead tired, man. I was sleep. I went. I had to work at eight in the morning, and they had that K1 tournament. Which, oh my lord! For those who don't know, man, you know how like you like something and you want other people to like it, or you want other people to be able to enjoy it. That's how I feel about certain things. Like people who like don't like boxing. It's like you don't like boxing. That's cool. But like when there's just a real good boxing match and people don't watch it because they don't like it, I'm like, oh man. But this K1 tournament was grimy. Anyways, it started at 3 in the morning. The first fight was on at like 3.40. I watched that foolishness until I went to work at 8 in the morning. It's actually done around 6.50. I went to sleep for about 20 minutes. Went to work. I was just hyped about this all day. It was beautiful. That was one of the best K1 tournaments ever. It's all over YouTube. So if you guys want to look for it, K1 2009 finals. It was awesome. It was sick. But, you know, MMA is important too, y'all. Peace.